This is State of the Nation on this 10th day of March 2016. Straight to the panelists that we have this morning to have our discussion. And to my extreme left, we have uh, Senator Onesmas Kipchumba Morkomen. That's a name that uh, not many people hear. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's Senator Onesmas uh, Kipchumba Murkomen, Senator for Elgeo Marquette. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, we have also a political analyst, and that's Dismas Mokua. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for joining us as well. We were expecting Senator Moses Wetangula to be coming in, uh, but he has given us his regrets. He may not be able to make it. However, we'll still continue with the conversation. Just a quick reminder that you're welcome to participate in the conversation via Twitter. I'll be reading your comments and uh, questions if you have any as we go along. So let me start uh, with you, Senator. And um, let's start with the by-elections that recently took place. First of all, your, your, your take. Um, it had been already predicted uh, that uh, Kericho was more or less uh, going to be a Jap area, mm. um, although there was stiff uh, and unexpected from many political analysts like uh, Mokua here, uh, mm. unexpected uh, resistance or le let me say unexpected numbers for Kanu. Uh, first of all, I am uh, very grateful, um, of course, for you inviting me here, but also I want to congratulate my friend uh, Aaron Chiriot. Um, now the youngest senator, 29 years, and uh, a fantastic candidate for us uh, in Kericho. Mm -hmm. um, I think many people forget, they haven't appreciated the politics of uh, Rift Valley, and particularly what happened in 2013. For us, we were not concerned as much that uh, Jap was not going to win, but you know there was this creation of a hype by uh, our competitors, uh, our friends in Kanu, and I think it's unfortunate that they had uh, you people in the media outlets uh, gave in, I mean, agreed with them. There was uh, so much media hype because of what happened in Bombay in a place called Yongoros. Mm -hmm. And then that hype, uh, uh, Kanu uh, hyped it and believed in their own hype and then sold it out there. But let me but, tell but you this. Let, let, me, yeah, let me just tell you this. Mm -hmm. The same poll Sangu ran against Charles Keter had done you know, fairly well. He had that 6,000 votes in 2013. Uh, there was an ODM candidate at that time who had 17,000. People have asked me why I say that the ODM voted for Kanu. It's because the polling stations that Paul, uh, that ODM candidate had higher in the last elections, you could see it went to Kanu. And so the natural assumption was that they voted for Kanu. But put even that aside, um, those who think that this is a contest of the political parties only are forgetting the real analysis. The argument, and many people should appreciate this, in Baringo, uh, Gideon Moy won for Senate, mm -hmm. but the governor was, is URP. And the votes that went to the president were 95%. And he, at that time, Gideon Moy was a principal campaigner of uh, uh, Honorable Musale Mudavadi, but he, he wasn't able to transfer that, those votes to UDF or in any matter. So those who, uh, I, I want to just uh, uh, encourage those who are doing political analysis that they must uh, dissociate themselves from candidates' competition. You know, I would rather look at Kericho more or less that if we had a weak candidate, despite the fact that we were jobbed, it was going to be possible that we were going to be beaten. So there was a lot of uh, benefit in, one, we were in having a fantastic candidate because we went through nomination process. Mm -hmm. Two is the fact that, uh, uh, of course, now after that hype, then the voters reacted and said and looked at Paul Sang, not as a candidate who is in a coalition of Jubilee. They began to look at him as an outsider fighting the deputy president. What even made worse for Paul, Paul Sang, because I still think he would have done even better, was that the campaigners who came in, like uh, uh, Governor Ruto, uh, uh, Honorable Mo, Gideon Moe, my colleague, and the others, were actually campaigning on an account of let us teach Jubilee a lesson. In fact, most of the teachers who would have perhaps voted for Paul Sang, uh, slowly uh, decided now to go for the other candidate when they were told the argument here is not about looking it's for a senator. It's it is that uh, Mr. Soshon is talking about we must teach a lesson to Jap. Uh, the, some of the campaigners were saying we must give a yellow card to uh, the president, the deputy president, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Those who do political analysis, you also appreciate that the next constituency where Paul Sang comes from is the MPs for Kano. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the analysis of 2013, the vote still went to Jubilee. Okay, so uh, let, let me come to Moku. And what, what does that speak of, uh, 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 first of all, that particular region, mm -hmm. uh, the Kalenjin vote? And secondly, in terms of political maturity? Because uh, traditionally we have known Kenyans, or it has been said, 
Kenyans vote for parties and, and, and not people. But looking at just the, what um, uh, Honorable Kipchumba Murkomen has given us as figures and facts, it looks like there is some political maturity because it's not about the party but the person. Well, you know, I, I choose to look at it from uh, a different level. Obviously, Mishmiwa here, his uh, focus is very clear on, uh, he's got a very clear agenda. Maybe one question you need to ask yourself, if this by election took place, say, in uh, Moranga or Nyeri, would the president Kenyatta have made about 10 tours to go and tell the people to vote? And it's very clear that the DP and uh, Murukomen and his team spent a lot of time, spent a lot of resources ensuring that uh, the ground doesn't shift. And in, mother, in, in as much as it was media heap, it was uh, felt in the ground because the, during the last election, the DP was not running the, I mean, when they were running for the election, they were not incumbents. But right now, the DP is in office and uh, is in charge of all the state resources, yet he was able to get uh, this kind of challenge. Granted that Aaron Cheruyot, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, anybody would have run on that ticket. Chances are of getting that election would have been uh, very high because this contest was not between Aaron Cheruyot and Paul Sang. This contest was between uh, D.P. Ruto and Governor Isaac Ruto and uh, Gideon Moy. And that's, for that reason, the D.P. spent a lot of time and resources. In fact, I think uh, uh, Kipshiba Murkomen spent a lot of time. However, the competition was able to get uh, 50,000 votes. And from where I'm seated, that should be cause of uh, concern <laughs> that uh, you can get... Uh, 50,000 human beings knowing that uh, this is the party which is said to be in government. And you remember clearly, the last few days, uh, the actual Murkomen is on record as having said that uh, it's not about Kano, this is about COD. They, they were referred uh, in several sections of the media mm. that uh, in fact uh, Governor Isaac Ruto, Gideon Moy, and the rest of the guys were puppets for COD. That uh, Raila Odinga, Kalozo Musioka, and Wetangula couldn't go and campaign. So that's a strategy they deployed cleverly on the last day when they knew that the rest of the guys wouldn't have the opportunity. And you know, I saw Senator Gideon Moy struggling, telling people that we are right <laughs> inside Jubilee. We are part of uh, the government. Mm. And as he has rightly put it, and uh, Khan won this uh, by-election, and Gideon Moy won this by-election, and Isaac Ruto won this by-election, then Senator Murkomenia would be reviewing his uh, political position. But now D.P. Ruto has sent the fear probably of the Lord, to all people in Rift Valley province, that if you're not going to play ball with me, if you're not going to be part of my team, then you don't have a political future. And right now, I suspect uh, those MPs that are refers to as uh, puppets of a uh, code, you know, like uh, uh, Sudi, Joanna Ngeno, and the rest of the guys, they must have gone back to the drawing table and looking at the uh, resources to see how they're going to manage this. Mm -hmm. But not giving it another, an entirely different light. The entire Jubilee system was uh, in uh, Kericho, you know, to sort out this by-election. Mm -hmm. How would they be able to tra translate that uh, strategy now to the entire election next year? Would they be able to have all that kind of a uh, resource? <laughs> and in as much as Abu is, is a very happy man, because you see, <laughs> at the lost, he wouldn't be smiling the way he's smiling right here. <laughs> because, you know, he would, would, would not even be getting calls from the DP, because the DP oh. would be furious. Okay. And I suspect that's the situation which is happening in Malindi now. You know, people have started looking okay. at Mungaro saying, oh, you misled us. Mm. How are we going to handle this? Okay, we, are, we, are, we will come to Malindi. Can but I come to Okay. Yeah, 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 you know, uh, and that's why I'm saying people miss the point. You can only analyze the Kanu uh, resurgence from a perspective of candidates for elective positions in whether governor MC or whatever. Mm -hmm. You cannot transfer that to presidential. And I, I, you cannot completely, you cannot transfer that to presidential elections. Because if you do that, then you miss the point. In 2013, uh, Nick Salat got 98,000 votes in Bomet. While uh, Senator Lesan, who won, got 115. But in the 98,000 votes, despite the fact that Nick Salat was a secretary of Kanu, never transferred even 1,000 votes to the coalition they were campaigning for, for which was for uh, a money coalition. Mm -hmm. So those who are excited that, oh, you know, there is a resurgence of Kanu, resurgence for what? So that they can transfer those votes to who? The competition for elections next year will be between Code and Jubilee. I mean, all the other players will just be uh, perhaps haggling for, for, for parliamentary or governor or whatever other candidate position. Mm -hmm. So for us, and we have always known that, that ours in Kericho was not about the presidential. It's not about how the president and the deputy is doing. That's why I saw even some analysis saying, oh, the president should have come. For what? That would be using a hammer to kill a fly. <laughs> I mean, the, that was a campaign that mm -hmm. principally was useful for us, uh, myself, 
if, if they were more, th they were not more than out uh, three or so legislators from uh, Kericho, who were outside from Kericho, who scammed in, K in, in Kericho. If anything, those of us who stayed almost a week was myself, Kindiki, and only Sang. I mean, and then many other MPs from uh, the region who came in and out. Because it wasn't really to the extent. The DP only did about uh, four days, you know, four serious days in the campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, the point we're trying to, to and, and actually the reason why we told DP he must come, is because there were a lot of misinformation that he didn't like the people of South Rift. There was no development that was going on there. So we also saw it as an opportunity for us to energize our base for next year's elections and to disengage ourselves from this propaganda. Um, so those people who came to campaign there to come in that place from, uh, from Kanu, uh, from the other side, really could have even costed more uh, the candid their candidate than uh, resurgence. And that resurgence has absolutely not I dare Kanu. If they think that they have uh, now they are, there is a resurgence, they should join our competitors now in the presidential election and wait and see if they will even get a one MC. But wasn't it worrying to see that yeah. there were such uh, huge numbers uh, supporting Kanu uh, in an area which was predominantly seen or viewed as the deepest <laughs> area? How many times should I make this point? And I want to repeat for the last time. Mm -hmm. Kidio Mo is a Kanu senator, but he was not able to transfer any votes to another place. So that concern is for what? That concern only can concern an MP or a senator or a governor. Whether in few, and that warning, the only lesson learned by Jubilee is that if you don't do good nominations, had we bungled the nomination, we would have been beaten by a kind of candidate. Because the voters would have said, because you denied us the choice we want, we are going to jump to uh, the next alternative. Mm -hmm. So the only usefulness and the seriousness of Kano, in fact, and let me say this, and I dare say this, uh, you know, in the in here, that in the public eye, yeah, exactly, that mm -hmm. Kano in the next elections. Can only, the only lesson they learn from Kericho is that they can't dare go to the competitors of Jubilee. If they want to continue being relevant going forward, is to pretend to say, oh, we are going to remain as Kano, but we'll support Uru Kenyatta. If they dare anything else, that they will go outside Uru Ruto, they will never get even an MCA. Mukua, um, do you agree with the Senator here that uh, as much as uh, many had uh, said that the lesson was for Jubilee, it is indeed a lesson for Kano that uh, they need to stick with uh, the ruling coalition? Well, you know, uh, the ideal situation for Senator Murkomen and uh, URP or JAP, and you know, the DPs on record are saying that uh, they were going to win by a landslide, 90%. So that you have uh, 50,000 rational or irrational or emotional human being saying that we are not listening to what the president has indicated is a very strong statement because you know 50,000 is actually a huge number whether or not that can be transferred to another presidential candidate probably the discussion for another day but the president was there on more than four occasions or rather the deputy the president, president was there for more than four occasions mm -hmm. and uh, for the first time in a long while from what I saw in the media he actually spoke in his mother tongue and you know so that, uh, so, so that now <laughs> so that he's able to really get the message to the people mm -hmm. and uh, there are a number of people who say that at that stage a number of uh, development projects were initiated, you know, a number of roads and a number of projects, which is probably legal to, you know, the Elections Act, that you can't do these things uh, three months to an election. But, you know, the president made uh, promises. But in my view, be that as it may, what we now need to look at is how to make sure that political parties are very strong, that it doesn't matter with a presidential candidate or a gubernatorial candidate or whatever position is, that are people who vote for political parties. I think that's the only way we'll be able to secure the nation. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't need to be that uh, the, the group which is holding uh, his uh, party together is the president and his de deputy. That if they take a decision one way or the other, then the thing separates. And you know the same is the case for Accord. If today Mr. Ray Lodinga, Kalonzo, and Wetangula decide to take a decision one, one way or the other, it's going to collapse. And I think for me, the the, the lesson that we must carry forward is that we must make sure our political parties are very solid. And I'm happy with what uh, Governor Joe has said in Mombasa, that all the rebels, guys who are campaigning against uh, their preferred candidates, must be disciplined. And they must do the same to, if they think that uh, Sudi and the rest of the guys who decided to campaign against their party interest, they must be disciplined. So that uh, when you join a political party, whether it's uh, run by a personality or by ideas or philosophies, you remain loyal to it. We don't want to have these political politicians, you know, jumping from one part to the other okay. at the taxpayer's expense. All right. Uh, I just want to make a conclusion on Kericho. That yes. one, uh, uh, 
you know, many people don't understand Kalenjin politics and uh, the internal democracy that we have always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. The reason why some of us, people like myself, Senator Sang, Senator Aaron Chiruyot, Senator Meli, very young senators. I mean, I came in when I was 32. Sang came in when he was 28 or 27. Mm -hmm. uh, this one now is coming when he's 29. The reason why we have that opportunity in Rift Valley is because of good